All right, uh, welcome back to another video. Um, today I'm going to be going into how to customize uh, KDE. I am on a Bazite uh, version of KDE. If you haven't seen my previous video, um, basically I'm doing a 30 day challenge with Bazite uh, using it on all of my devices um, to see what the ease of use is and how well it can be adapted by you know new users. But to help you along the way, I do want to do a quick um, Kind of tutorial on how to customize your KDE desktop um, since that is the default for like SteamOS and um, Bazite. Uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. Uh, so first off, um, I was able to move bar at the top here by just uh, right clicking on it and then going to uh, show panel configuration. And when you do that, you are greeted with this uh, where you can do a bunch of different things like add uh, new panels. So if you want multiple panels like one at the bottom where um, on the on the side, you can do so. You can change the position of that panel, along with the alignment. If you want it centered all the way across, or if you want it left or right, um, you can do that. You know very easily, and then you can also change the width as well. Um, but I do want to add one panel, and I'm just going to do a empty panel, and it's added down here at the bottom. Um, and what I'm going to do is to do a bottom dock um, down here. So I actually want to take the icon taskbar and move it down here. And then on this, um, now that I have the icons only taskbar down here, I do want to have this centered, but I do not want it to be the full width. I want it to fill the content um, of the taskbar itself. And we can still make it floating, but I do want it to dodge windows. Um, so if windows are coming near it, it will go away. And so as you can see up here, that did move my um, panel over some there. So I will have to add a widget here and we're just going to add a panel spacer. And then that moves all of my icons back to the uh, right hand side. Yeah, as you can see here, I have the top panel and then my icons at the bottom. Um, if you wanted to, you know, change this up, you can, you know, change the size and height of the panel. So you can have uh, more of your icons showing down there as well. Then you can configure these icons very easily by just right clicking on them and you can pin them to taskbar or you can move the actual order of these icons if you'd like to. Um, like for instance, I don't actually use this specific terminal, but I do um, use the console one. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this to my taskbar there, move it over here. And then uh, I have Google Chrome there, but that is not the default browser that I prefer to use. Um, so I'm going to go over here, go to settings, and then go to default applications and change this to Zen browser. Um, when I do that, it's going to change the Zen browser um, down here as the pinned up application um, on there as well. So actually, let's jump back into settings because we want to kind of change some of the uh, look and feel of what we have here. So if we scroll down, and then go into colors and themes. Um, you'll be greeted here with the global theme. This is like the quickest way to change the entire look and feel of what you have here. Um, so you can go to get new and then you can kind of browse um, all these different themes here. And you can literally just click install and it'll install the theme um, onto the uh, theme options here. And then you can apply it to your, your theme that you want. Um, I do want to install this one because I like the icon pack that comes with this one. So I kind of like, like to take different things from different uh, themes, which you can do this very easily going to the individual sections of it as well. But I actually don't remember what the icon pack is called uh, in this one. So I'm going to install it here first and then go back into here and then choose what you want to apply. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to take colors, application style. I'm going to just take everything but the icons and then go ahead and apply that. And then as you can see, my icons have updated and changed all the way around. Um, icons up here and then icons down here. And then also the icons um, for the actual settings portion right here as well. So you can go through here and change, you know, pretty much anything. Um, you can change your, your cursor on here, the splash screen that pops up. So I know um, the land uh, theme brings a different brings a different splash screen here as well. Then you also have like the window decorations, which are these here um, for what I like to do is actually change the title bar buttons and like to remove all of these except for the X button. 
that's just, I like it for like a cleaner look. Um, and I really rarely ever minimize um, or maximize my windows because I'm going to be using the um, tiling option um, that I'm going to show here in, in just a moment. But I like to use that so I can, you know, X out of them quickly or just use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And then so now you see all I have is just an X on my window here and nothing else. So if I open up like the file explorer, um, you'll see here just the X as well. And then the file icon um, on the opposite side. So that's kind of just the way I like it. Um, it's just a little bit more of a, of a cleaner look than having all of the extra stuff in the title bar there. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then I do suggest kind of just going through all of these settings here, changing the things that you need You can go on display and, and monitor and change the configuration of the monitors that you have and kind of just go through all of these different options and just make sure they're set to your liking um, of what you want. But I will go into the keyboard and then shortcuts. Um, so these are the shortcuts um, so for keybinds that you want to be able to launch different things. Um, for instance, uh, meta ease, I actually like to use um, the super key and F for file explorer instead. And then for the emoji selector, I like to use the E option. And so I can apply those or I can keep going. I kind of like to apply as I go, just in case, you know, I do X out of this for any reason, it, it won't change what I'm using. The calculator, I like to be uh, meta C console to launch that. I like to use meta and T. And then as you can see, if there is something else that is assigned to it, you will be asked to reassign it to um, get rid of that. So if we go into spectate here as well for the rectangular, I've already assigned it to meta P because I've had to use that um, earlier. And then let's see here. So terminal, I don't need anything. Actually, I can just get rid of that because I'm actually using the console um, terminal emulator, so I don't need that at all. Um, you can also add windows or not windows, but applications in here but for one. You know, Discord, for instance, I can click on Discord and then the launch, I normally use Meta and D to launch Discord. And then also I can launch, you know, Telegram here as well. So if I go to Telegram and then I want to launch Meta and I use G um, because T is obviously taken by the uh, terminal. And you can go on and so on and so forth, you know, add all of the different applications that you want along with the, the key binding shortcut that you want as well. Make sure you do, you know, click apply. So those changes will actually apply on there as well. And then the other thing I like to do is actually add under window management, uh, under window behavior. I like to change this to uh, focus follows uh, the mouse and then also raise the, um, the window. Um, so what this does is when I have multiple windows open, this is more used when I have it in tiling mode, but it'll automatically change the focus window based on where my mouse is instead of me having to click on that specific window. So when I apply this, um, I'm in this window now, and then you can see that it is, you know, switching windows instead of me having to click on that specific window. It's just when I hover over the window itself. And to make that more obvious, you can actually go into desktop effects. And then down here, you can go to dim effect. So when you have it dim, all the windows that are not active will be dimmed. So you can see that this one's active. And then as I switch, this one's active. There's a few other ones that you can do. You can do like slide back. You can add wobbly windows if you want to. I do like the magic lamp when you do shrink your or minimize a window instead of the squash one. And I do like to have windows translucent as well. So when you're hovering the, or moving them, you know, around, um, I'll go ahead and apply it and show you. It becomes translucent so you can see what's behind it. And then also you can see here now that I switch between the two, the other one will hide behind the other one when I move it. So you have some cool, you know, different animations and things. And do notice that if you don't have a very high, you know, graphics card that these will affect the performance of your device. But if you do have a pretty beefy one, then you shouldn't have any issues, you know, whatsoever. But definitely go through all these and see which ones they, you know, kind of describe, you know, what you want underneath of it and uh, see which ones you want and pick them and then they just hit apply. Um, and then the other section is the virtual desktops. Um, I do like to have at least three. Um, sometimes I do like up to, you know, four or five um, desktops as well. And then you can move between these desktops by having this widget up here, or you can use, I believe the default is alt and control. Sorry, it's meta and control to switch between the, the desktops. So you can switch, you know, back and forth between 
each desktop you know very easily and then their kwin scripts the one i like to go for which is actually really working well nowadays is the cronkite so this gives you some dynamic tiling uh out, out of the box within within kde so let me go ahead and get rid of that and then i'll check this on and then go into settings i only particularly use the tiling layout um, and not the rest of these oh other than but we use the spiral option and tile and then under geometry, this will be able to give you some gaps along the edges. So at the bottom, I typically do 10 all the way around. And then I typically do 20 at the top. So it actually does not get rid of my bar up here. And then down here for gaps in between. So that's um, going down the middle of your actual windows. Um, I'll do at least five. So I'll go ahead and apply those and hit OK. And then when I hit apply, you'll see it automatically tiled my windows and so as I get rid of a window and open up a new window it automatically tiles them um, as you can see so there you go so I can very easily you know open my terminal and then I see it continuously open terminals um, and it keeps tiling as you go through and you can change the different tiling layouts through here if you want to and then when you do that it actually does enable it in your um, shortcuts um, to be able to enable different shortcuts to be specific to tiling so if i go under um, shortcuts and then under kwin all these cronkite shortcuts are now enabled so you can change them different you know focus ones or changing you know to different uh layouts so like spiral spread um all of them here you can switch whatever you want the keybind to be to switch between all of those uh so yeah so that is a way to do that and then as you can see i can still put my mouse down here to bring up my dock as well but when i don't have any windows on my screen uh, my dock comes back and uh, shows there so yeah so this is just a quick video on how to be able to edit your um, kde uh, theming and uh, just the way it looks and feels and so definitely if you like this type of content please consider subscribing and i'll catch you in the next one peace